Hi there. In lecture 3.2, I want to focus on the neurons. You can think of neurons as the building blocks of the human brain. Uh, your brain has about 86 billion, that's billion with a B, neurons, and they're all massively interconnected. It's one of the most complex structures known. Your brain is also sort of high maintenance. The, in the average person, the human brain accounts for about 2% of their body weight. So three pound organ, 150 pounds, about 2% of your body weight. But it consumes about 25% of your calories. So your brain's working hard and it needs a lot of energy. I'm, I use the uh, analogy of a building block because it turns out that the same neurons, the same structures are used to build very different brains. So the brain of a rat and the brain of a rabbit and a cat and a dog and a bear and a human, we all have the same neurons. The only thing that changes is how those neurons are put together. In the same way that you could use a brick to build an outhouse or a mansion, you can use neurons, the same neurons to build a rat brain or a human brain. Now what's the structure of a neuron? I know you know this before, but let's go through it briefly. The input to a neuron is the dendrites. Dendrites receive information from neighboring neurons. The information that comes into the dendrites is brought together and considered in the cell body of the neuron or the soma. If the cell body decides that there's enough information or stimulation coming in from neighboring neurons, then that neuron's going to decide to fire an action potential, which is an electrical current. And it's gonna fire that signal or action potential down the length of its axon until it gets to the axon terminals. There, the action potential triggers um, the migration of neurotransmitters to the very edge of its membrane, and then those neurotransmitters are dumped in the synapse, which is the gap between neurons, so that that neuron communicates its signals to its neighboring neurons. Um, I want to spend a moment talking about myelin. Now, we have some very long axons, and obviously it's gonna be very important for information to be communicated as quickly as possible down those axons. So for example, if I step on a, a B, um, hmm, poor B, step on a tack, um, I want my brain to figure out that I need to move my foot as quickly as possible. So how does a brain speed the transmission of action potentials? Well, it does so with a kind of insulation called myelin. And just as uh, insulation in homes comes in these strips that you can wind around pipes if you want to, myelin is a fatty tissue that is wrapped around the length of an axon. And it's wrapped around in these sheets, and in between the sheets, there are gaps where the axon is exposed. And those gaps are where the electrical signal or action potential jumps. So action potentials actually jump along the length of an axon in the same way that, say, a kangaroo jumps along uh, the ground. Um, you have probably heard the terms white matter and gray matter as they're applied to the human brain. White matter is myelin. So any place you look at in the human brain that has a white color, that means you're looking at axons that have myelin wrapped around them. So those axons probably are trying to communicate information a fairly long distance, and so the myelin is used to speed the transmission of action potentials along those long distances. When you look at this, this brain, the picture you're seeing now, and there's some regions that are gray, those are regions where there isn't myelin. Maybe it's cell body, or maybe you're looking at neurons that only have to transmit uh, information a short distance, and so they don't need the myelin to speed up transmission rates. Okay, why do I talk about myelin? Because myelin is involved in a disease that has its onset 
often during the college years in people in their 20s and 30s. And it's, it's called MS or multiple sclerosis. Sclerosis just means scarring. And it's a scarring of myelin. So what happens is MS is an autoimmune disease that attacks the myelin in a person's nervous system as if it's an outside invader. And so the myelin gets chewed up. And when the myelin gets chewed up as a result of MS, that disrupts the timing of action potentials being uh, sent down an axon. And so it's as if your neurons um, can't work together in the normal temporal sequence. Imagine a, an orchestra or a band where people are playing with, at different tempos. Um, a coherent signal is not conveyed under those circumstances, and that's what happens with uh, MS. MS is treated as an autoimmune disease. Um, that's where most of the uh, research and treatment is focused now. MS is a little funny because the symptoms for MS vary dramatically. Um, it all depends on where your myelin is being destroyed. Um, it could be in axons that have to do with your vision, in which case you'd have blurry vision, or it might um, involve the attack of myelin that's wrapped around uh, axons that have to do with your legs or feet, and you might have trouble moving your, your legs or your feet. Um, so that's, myelin is, is super duper important. Okay, that's all I'm gonna tell you about the gross structure of neurons for now. Come right back and we'll talk about how neurons talk to each other.